So to your convert, got you down. You can't convert your latest smart device. Getting those smart config packet errors over and over. So you say, screw it. Let's just take my new fan controller and we'll just stick it in the cloud. And then we'll do the Tuya integration with Home Assistant. But then there's a little issue. So yeah, we're gonna show you how to do that with no soldering, no little exploit, geeky command line stuff, Raspberry Pi, whatever. It's real simple to do. And we're gonna show you how to do it with one of these. What? Yeah, let's check it out. When you feel it's hopeless, when you think that you're lost, oh, I will take your hand and we'll rise up from the dust. Oh, here we come back to life, we're still breathing, standing up, everybody's gonna see it. Oh, all you need to know is that we're holding on, even if we fall, we will rise up. So in this video, we're gonna do a little two-parter. We're gonna show you how to flash your two your modules with no soldering, of course, and that's using the little jig. And I have been making a few of them for people, and I'm not sure how long I'm gonna to continue to do that, but check down in the description of the video. I'll leave details if I'm continuing to make some of the jigs for people that don't have access to a 3D printer and don't like to solder, but still wanna get their shit out of the cloud. And because we did have some requests of several people asking about our latest blog post with that little fan controller that has dimming and fan speed control all in one and show you how to flash that and show you how to set it up in Home Assistant. We're going to do that towards the end of the video. So, of course, as always, you do have all of the chapters down below so you can just jump around and grab the pieces that you need as well as you can just cruise the description of the video. And speaking of that, don't forget to give us a like, dislike, whatever it might be. Share us. Do what you need to do. I really appreciate it. Oh, and if you're not subscribing, you probably should. It's free. So Tuya uses several different modules, and one of the real standard modules is the TYWE3S, if I remember correctly. And it is used in a lot of different devices. Now, some of them, such as bulbs or plugs, you may not be able to open them because a lot of manufacturers just want to glue them shut or you just really have to destroy the device to get into them. But luckily, with many other devices, such as switches and different sensors, we can open them very easily. So you'll notice in this device here, which some of you that have been around the channel for a while may recognize this one. That was that little nightlight video that we put a PIR sensor in. Notice of the ESP chip board here, the board with the blue. It has all the pins on the side. There's also a faceplate to another light switch. It just pops right open, no screws, and you'll notice it's the same exact chip. And it's really easy to get to. Then one of our favorites, the Martin Jerry dimmer, you'll notice the same exact little chip with the pads on the side. Well, here's the jig and it has some pogo pins or some people call them the little test spring pins, but I've always found them to be called pogo pins. And we put them on the RX and TX and then GPIO zero ground and then 3.3 volts. And it fits this chip right here and you put some test probes on the pogo pins and you flash it using usb so if you have a device that's easy to open and has this same to your module whether it be a light bulb a plug or a light switch be sure and check out the blog post down below we're going to build a list of various devices like this that are easy to get to so there's no soldering as you can see you just put it over the chip line it up with the pins it may take you several times to do it and we will try to show you a position that we use. It is hard me reaching across the desk and you just put it down over the chip and push it down. Well, what is that little clip that you teased us with, Travis? Well, that's what I like to do. I like to take the clip and I like to put it around the switch and the pogo pins on the jig and press it down that way I'm not having to hold it with my finger the entire time as it flashes. Because it can take say a minute or so to flash and sometimes that may feel like an eternity whenever you're trying to hold your finger down on it. So we will leave the STL file that is linked on Thingiverse 
down in the description of the video if you can make your own and I will leave the size of the pogo pins that I've used in this and if you're one of the guru cab people that can make even a better jig than this man we'd love to see it definitely share it down in the comments down below so no further ado let's go check out flashing that fan dimmer control module whatever you want to call it it's a really cool switch and we're going to go all the way through and we're going to bring it into Tasmodo and put it into home assistant a little small Phillips, no crazy tri-wing or nothing like that. Before I put this to the side, I'll go ahead, before I forget, I'll deadhead this load for the fan and the red for the lighting with the Wago. That way when we fire it up, it will not shock anything or myself and short out. So to take this guy apart, you got those four screws apart. And that's it, pretty simple, or a little spudger. And it's not on that tight. And just pop it apart, and that's it. And it will come right out. You can actually see right here, these little pins actually plug into this connector here. So there's no wires for you to worry about. So just pop it open, it comes right off, it's that simple. Now you can put this guy to the side. And you'll notice one thing that we just talked about, the Tuya module, the TYWE3S, that our little jig will fit on. Now, I know you may be looking at some of these other little pins here that says RX and TX. That's actually not the RX and TX that goes to the Tuya module. That's actually for the Tuya MCU on the other side of this board. And no, you do not need to remove this board from the faceplate unless you really feel like it. So we'll go ahead and put the jig together and we'll get this guy flashed here. And well, how do you connect the jig to your computer? Well, there's several different little flash jiggers that we use. There's, this is the CH340G, I believe, model. And there are several different ones. And of course, I will leave the link down below, but you can get them off of Amazon, AliExpress, all kinds of different places. And they are fairly inexpensive. And there's also a couple of other models. There's this one here. This is the FTDI model. Now take note, it does have a different USB plug on it. So don't forget your cable for that one. I know you probably haven't seen one of those style USB in a while. And this one, I do like to put a extension USB. That way I don't have to plug it straight into the computer. Now one key thing I do want to point out, you'll notice this one has a... 5 volt or 3.3 or it's called 3v3 make sure you do not have the jumper on 5 volts on the power pin here you'll see it has 5 volts and then 3v3 do not use the 5 volt pin you will end up frying your switch and what i like to use to connect the jig are these little test probes and you just hook it on to the pogo pin and i like to put this one opposite way since they are kind of close and you can see here, it does hook the copper clip to the pogo pin itself. And it won't be touching the other one. Even if it rotates over here, it's gonna put plastic over there and it's not gonna touch the other pogo pin. So it will keep the lines isolated. And on the other side of this wire is also another test clip. And that way you can hook this straight to the USB flasher if you like. So you could just do this number and connect it straight up to there. But I do find it gets really tight and you end up messing and trying to put and this thing flips over. So what I'd like to do is I like to take some DuPont jumper wires and I use the type that has the male on one side and then the female on the other side. And then so I'll take the exact color and that way you can plug it in here on this is the RX pin, and the RX pin goes to the TX pin on the wiring of the Tuya module. So then I'll take the blue one, and then I'll take the blue one, and then just hook the little test probe to the DuPont jumper on the male side. So we'll go ahead and finish getting this wiring up, and we'll get it connected to the USB flasher. And that's all for the little test clips. It may look a little crazy, but we do have it laid out with TX, RX, GPIO 0, 
ground, and 3.3 volts. Now, if this isn't your first time flashing, you probably remember we do have to hold GPIO zero to ground. That's why we have there the pin. And if you're, this is your first time, basically GPIO zero puts the ESP chip that's inside this module into a kind of bootloader mode. Kind of think of it like as you held down the key to get into the BIOS and the computer. And that way we can change the operating system on this chip here. So we need to connect the black and the green ground and GPIO zero together. So what I'll do on this is I'll take the green on my DuPont jumper wires and I'll go ahead and hook both clips, the green and the black to the same pin, just like so. And when you do lay these out on the desks, make sure that they are not touching each other because of course you will have bare wires and you don't want to short anything out. And then our green wire. We have some extras here because of the way the color and we just aren't using those. And that's all you need to do to wire this up. Now this pogo pin jumper jig thing is now connected to the USB flasher. I won't plug it in just yet. There's one other little step that we have to do that's really just for this actual switch. Typically with other switches, there's no other little Tuya module that's on the backside. It's like a secondary microcontroller and some of them let you unplug it. Well, this one, you could just at this point, you could put the pogo pin adapter on it and I like to hold it with that clamp and then you could just plug it in and flash it with Tasmotizer or Node MCU Pi Flasher or whatever you want to use. But with the fan controller, there's another chip on the back side here as it controls all of the LEDs that are across the top, the buttons, the other LEDs. They just simply ran out of room for GPIO pins to use it with the Tuya module here. So basically what you need to do is to make this chip on the back side go into reset mode so we it doesn't dirty up the RX and TX lines and prevent us from flashing. You'll notice there's an in reset via hole and then there's a ground. And the reset leads to the secondary MCU and so what you need to do is we need to take a little jumper. And again, I like to use these little male DuPont jumpers. I like to get the variety pack that has the ones that had the two male sides. And while we're flashing it and before you apply power to it is I just slide this down into the reset hole and then same thing for the in the ground. Really just kind of lay them there. You may ha I have found that you may have to put like a little bit of blue tack or even if you want to use some tape. And of course, if you did not want to use this ground pin, you could use this ground pin right here at the bottom if that makes it easier. But you will need to use this one in reset spot because that's going to pull the reset pin down low to allow you to flash this thing. Now it may take you a few tries but you'll notice you can see the pins are touching down in there and the GPIO zero, that middle one has to be in that little notch. And of course, if you don't get all your pins lined up just right, the thing won't work. So don't freak out if you don't get it the first time. Once you do get the hang of it with the little jig, you'll be doing them in no time. And basically I'll just take and put the switch and pinch it in the little clip and that's it. It stays put. And that way, if you wanted to, you could back up the firmware, you can do it multiple times and everything. Now at this point, you think you do have the pins on correctly. You can just open up Node MCU Pi Flasher, Tasmatizer, whatever it is, and just try to hit the button. Now, one trick I did find that was easier for me, I did install ESP Tool Pi. And we will leave the link down below on how to install it. It's not too bad to do, but it gives you a little simple command line tool that you can just check to see if you have yours correct. Make sure you do have your device plugged in. And I'm just gonna do ESP Tool.py flash 
underscore ID, and it should auto detect the COM ports. Now, if you get this message here, detecting chip ESP 8266, 85, etc., you know you have it correct, and it will show you also the flash size. And if for the ones that are wanting to back up the firmware, do take note of all the various switches that you have that you're flashing with this. They may be a one or a two meg. If you are backing up firmware, do make sure you change the command line to do a two meg backup. So once you do have this, do unplug and power it because now it's no longer correctly in bootloader and just cycle the power to it. And we are going to pull up Tasmatizer. Again, our COM port may be different than yours. It's COM21. If you didn't have it plugged in, hit refresh. It will pull the list. Now we're going to go ahead and flash one of our releases. So we'll hit release. It's currently 8.3.1. And I know it does say backup original firmware, but of course, at the time of the recording of this video, when I did test it with this version, it only backed up one megabyte of the flash, which wasn't good. So we'll go ahead and leave it unchecked and we'll say erase before flashing. And it's that simple. Just hit the Tasmatize button and you'll get this message. If it does crash on you, you may want to try Node MCU Pi Flasher. I have heard people have some issues with this at times and maybe have to run it as administrator. But if not, just use Node MCU Pi Flasher. We'll leave that link down in the description below. And at this point, it is writing the chip. Now you'll notice it does say Flashing successful, please power cycle the device and click OK. Now, before you power cycle it, make sure you do pull off GPIO zero. In our case, we were using that black wire. That way we can send in your Wi-Fi configuration. But if you don't want to do that, you could power this switch back up on mains, unhook all the wires, everything, and it should be in access point mode and you can connect with your phone and put your Wi-Fi stuff in that way. We're going to send over our config. We're going to put in our SSID and we'll put in our password. And if you did want to go ahead and pick the module template, you can. But I like to set up a lot of that through the GUI. So we're just going to go ahead and send over the Wi-Fi information and then we'll disconnect everything and get the switch going. So we'll go ahead and hit save. It's sent over. The device will restart and it should join your network. So I hope you've enjoyed the little pogo pin thing and definitely taking care of all your two year devices and taking them out of the cloud. It's definitely worth it. Don't leave them in there. Local control. Now, like we mentioned before, if you want one of those little pogo pins, you should maybe get someone locally can make one for you. A friend that may have a 3D printer or whatever. It might be someone in your country that may be making one. I may possibly still be making them. Again, check the description down if I am making them for people. Don't forget, give us a like, dislike, whatever it might be, and shoot us a comment. There's really other cool fan controllers or light switches or dimmers or whatever with Tuya modules. Definitely leave us a comment down below. I always like to reverse engineer some weird Tuya module thing. And I do appreciate all the Patreon subscribers. Definitely helps out and bringing cool little projects and products to the channel each week and do some cool stuff. I really appreciate it. And I'm not going to repeat it again. So, well, y'all take care. Yep.